China now has the ability to launch precise long-range attacks on ships, including aircraft carriers, all the way from mainland China to the Western Pacific, thanks to the DF-21D ballistic missiles. This development has put the U.S. Navy on high alert. Why are these missiles causing such concern for the U.S. Navy? And are they truly as destructive as they're made out to be? Watch the video till the very end for some really big news. The U.S. Navy faces a significant challenge as its adversary, China, has created a ballistic missile capable of blowing up their carrier ships to smithereens. China's DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile, ASBM, is now a reality. Beijing has successfully created, tested, and deployed the world's first weapon capable of targeting a moving aircraft carrier strike group, CSG, from long distances using mobile launchers on land. Did you know that China's strategic missile force, the Second Artillery, already has the ability to potentially use the DF-21D against the US? CSGs, if there's a conflict, and they likely expect it to act as a deterrent? This development shouldn't come as a surprise. Various pieces of information about ASBMs have been popping up from Chinese sources and US official statements and reports for a while now, for anyone willing to piece them together. There is an old saying which goes like this, in war, you should avoid what's strong and attack what's weak. But guess what? This old school strategy seems to be exactly what China's military is going for, especially with their ASBM program. They're all about using their strengths against the weaknesses of the US military. If they pull it off, their ASBM system could be the first in the world to target moving aircraft carrier strike groups from land-based mobile launchers. That's a whole new level of threat to the US Navy. See, for ages, the US Navy has relied on aircraft carriers to flex its muscles globally, like around the Taiwan Strait. Since way back in the 1920s, they've been all about protecting carriers with their air groups. But now, this ASBM could basically skip past all that and leave the air groups out of the defense plan. The only other system that's ever had this potential? Submarines. But here's the thing, China's still working on beefing up its submarine fleet, and they're not quite there yet when it comes to advanced anti-submarine warfare. Meanwhile, the US Navy's got carrier-based aircraft handling that like pros. But when it comes to defending against missiles, that's a whole different ballgame and a seriously tough challenge for any military out there. China's rapidly advancing military technology poses a serious challenge to the US Navy in the Western Pacific. With increasingly sophisticated naval platforms, aircraft, and missiles, China's capabilities are growing stronger. Central to this expansion is the development of command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance C4ISR, systems. These advancements enable China to effectively monitor maritime activities, coordinate military operations, and target potential threats. Effective utilization of ISR capabilities will be crucial in this regard. But that's not all. The United States recently took a significant step to bolster its strategic position in the Western Pacific by deploying three aircraft carriers, despite facing a more delicate situation in the Middle East. These carriers include the USS Carl Vinson, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, and the USS Ronald Reagan. Each aircraft carrier, accompanied by a destroyer, cruiser, and submarine, is capable of carrying out a range of missions within a battle group, including air defense, reconnaissance, and anti-submarine warfare. However, these carrier groups could be vulnerable to attacks by long-range Chinese missiles designed to target carriers, especially in the event of escalating tensions or a conflict. According to the Pentagon, the DF-21, known as a carrier killer, is equipped with a maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MA-RV, and has a range exceeding 1,500 kilometers. Its use of solid propellant and a transporter erecta launcher, TEL, vehicle launch mechanism, allows for quick deployment and portability, enhancing its tactical effectiveness in rapidly changing military environments. Beijing has developed various versions of the DF-21, including the DF-21C, which is capable of carrying either nuclear or conventional warheads, and the DF-21D, specifically designed as an anti-ship ballistic missile. Additionally, the U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, revealed in 2016 that Beijing was exploring the development of a new nuclear variant, the DF-21E CSS-5 Mod 6. 
Coming back to the DF-21, it serves as a deterrent against potential adversaries attempting to enter areas of strategic importance to Beijing, such as the East or South China Seas. This could pose a significant challenge, particularly as China has expressed its intention to reunify with Taiwan, which Beijing regards as a breakaway province. On the other hand, Taiwan doesn't want anything to do with China and wants to remain an independent nation. However, China is persistent. But wait, there's even more to consider. When fighter jets like the F-A-18 and F-35C take off from a U.S. aircraft carrier, they can only fly up to 500 miles. That's their max range. So if a U.S. Navy carrier wants to stay safe from a DF-21D missile, it has to stay more than 1,000 miles away from the coast. But there's a problem. Those fighter jets might not even be able to cover that distance, which means they can't get close enough to China to do anything. And get this, the DF-21 missile could team up with some serious high-tech stuff like advanced radars and intelligence systems, making it a big part of China's plan to keep other countries out of its turf. They're pretty confident about their anti-carrier game, even with more U.S. ships nearby. For example, when the USS Carl Vinson was cruising in the Philippine Sea with other ships, China made sure to remind everyone about their anti-ship missiles like the DF-21D and DF-26, even though rare adium. Carlos Sardiello said the carrier strike group is all set for action. A lot of people are worried about China's growing collection of long-range missiles and what that means for U.S. carriers in the Pacific. And Sardiello's confidence didn't really come with much evidence to back it up. In fact, experts from all over are sounding the alarm about how vulnerable aircraft carriers are in the Western Pacific because of China's expanding missile arsenal, including those problematic DF-21s and DF-26s. Experts say that even though the U.S. military sends carriers to show it's ready to deal with North Korea and China if things get rough, China's missile attacks could put the U.S. naval fleet in danger. China's DF-21 missiles are designed to keep U.S. carriers from getting too close to the front lines in the Western Pacific. Patrick Cronin, who heads Asia-Pacific Security at the conservative think tank Hudson Institute, suggests that during war, China might try to sink carriers operating within the so-called Second Island Chain, which stretches from Japan to Guam and Micronesia. Even the former Indo-Pacific Command Chief Admiral Harry Harris highlighted China's anti-ship capabilities, especially their DF-21D missiles, warning that these mid-range missiles can target aircraft carriers in the Western Pacific. And here's a shocking fact. A report by the Congressional Research Service, CRS, in 2022, stated that China's arsenal of anti-ship ballistic missiles, ISBMs, can hit moving targets and effectively block the U.S. Navy from getting within a thousand miles of China's coast. The report even mentioned a press report from December 3, 2020, where Admiral Philip Davidson confirmed that China had successfully tested an anti-ship ballistic missile against a moving ship for the first time, according to the U.S. government. The CRS report cautioned that China's Navy poses a significant challenge to the U.S. Navy's control of ocean areas in the Western Pacific marking the first such challenge since the Cold War ended. Even though the U.S. Navy has robust capabilities and ongoing developments, important Japanese ports like Sasebo and Yokosuka, which house American warships, could be vulnerable to severe attacks, according to Toshi Yoshihara, a senior scholar at the Center for Strategic and Budgetary Assessment in Washington. However, the U.S. isn't completely outmatched. Independent defense analyst Ben Lewis believes that the U.S. military takes the threat of the DF-21D seriously. He asserts that the defensive capabilities of American carrier strike groups, CSGs, are as credible as the Chinese missile. The U.S. has advanced air defense systems protecting its carriers and is making progress in logistics to sustain forces in the region more efficiently. While China's enhanced anti-ship capabilities pose challenges, Lewis argues that the U.S. still holds significant qualitative advantages over the PLA. The U.S. has extensive experience in power projection and high-quality systems, giving it a serious edge. Furthermore, China's focus on developing its third aircraft carrier, the Fujian, indicates that aircraft carriers remain vital on the battlefield. The Fujian is expected to become operational soon and would likely be deployed in a cross-strait contingency. Additionally, the U.S. Navy's decision to prioritize ballistic missile defense ships like the Arleigh Burke Flight 3 over platforms like the DDG-1000 and Littoral Combat Ship 
reflects concerns about the threat posed by the DF-21D. The U.S. is also advancing its hypersonic assault capabilities and cruise missiles launched by SSGNs, which could target Chinese sites before the second artillery's missile launch. Hypersonic missiles are planned to be deployed on Zumwalt-class warships of the U.S. Navy. Despite the challenges posed by the DF-21D, U.S. Navy officials assert their commitment to projecting power wherever necessary, including in the face of continuous testing of the DF-21D by the PLA. The deployment of three carriers in the Indo-Pacific region shows how determined Washington really is. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more updates.